Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing this in with your brother this week. Let me go ahead and get it. all of this stuff here. Turn off. Did I just say get at it? <laughs> but no, family, I'm going to be very honest tonight. Very, very honest. I actually prayed to the father and asked him for assistance with this lesson here tonight because it's angering that we even have to go through this. But I got to humble myself and shut my little black ass up and come with education okay i gotta learn sometimes to put my feelings aside and educate i want to talk about this thing with kamala harris first and foremost i did not even want to talk anything about this but unfortunately we have to we have to we must because we must educate each other we have to educate one another we must edify one another in these particular circumstances okay so that's how i want to come with this here tonight so family please any animosity or whatnot let's take all of that throw it out the window tonight we brothers and sisters and i'm going to be saying some things here tonight that is going to anger many of you i can tell you right now there's gonna be a lot of sisters that's gonna get mad at me tonight and if you do happen to get mad at me tonight i am so glad and so happy that you do and if you want to continue and further to be angry with me, all you got to do is just go away. All you got to do is go away. But I'm going to talk about the truth tonight. I'm going to tell the truth. And if you are getting upset, you're only getting upset at the truth. There's going to be a lot of men, a lot of our brothers that's going to get mad at me tonight. And the same rules apply for you as it does for our sisters. OK, because I don't care. We're going to speak the truth tonight. Why? Because it's time. Family, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 3. So if you haven't yet already, family, please open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Virgin Bible with the Apocrypha. We are going to be reading from Isaiah, chapter 3. That is going to be our foundational text. But we are going to jump. As a matter of fact, let's take care of this here before we even get to that text. Let's take a look at something. Let me discuss this. First and foremost, why is this lesson even coming up? It's coming up because of Kamala Harris, right? I'm not going to set up nothing. Let's just not beat around the bush. Kamala Harris, they want to put this woman in the presidential seat. That is going to be a major, major issue for every black man in this country. Why? All you have to do is go look at her policies. I'm not talking about her. You go do your own research about the policies, her policies, and the things that she did towards black men when she was an elected official in the state of California. Now, as we all know, for those of you who are not educated, there has never been one president of the United States that has ever been elected. They have all been selected and it's done by the Electoral College. Your vote means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. When you go to those polls and make an attempt to vote for a president, your vote is not going towards that. Your vote is going towards who they think is the best candidate for your choice. If you don't know anything about elections and polls, go back into our library and I go over it thoroughly. OK, just look for the election stuff. But this has nothing to do with whether or not you're able to vote for Kamala Harris or any of that stuff. So let's let's start jumping into this. Let me start fleshing this out. Family, I want you to please go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17. I want you to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, and please go down to verse 15. I'm going to show you, first and foremost, where it all begins. We're going to do this, and then we're going to get into Isaiah and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to tell you, if you're not ready to learn tonight, go away right now. Just leave. If you're a person that doesn't have any patience, if you're a person that gets bored or whatever it is, you don't want to learn. You don't want to know what it takes to be successful so that the father will show you his face. Then get just get up out of here. 
Get up out of here and go because you are a detriment to our people and I'm sick and tired of you people. I'm sick and tired of our people that don't want to grow. All they want to do is complain and nag and I'm sick and tired of that nonsense. Go somewhere with that. Go about your business. This here is for those people that are serious about this walk in the truth. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 15. Thou shall in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. The God of Israel made this clear. Israelites cannot vote for someone that is not an Israelite. You cannot vote for anyone that is not an Israelite and it has to be a brother. Not only does it not only have to be an Israelite, but a brother, but they have to be keeping the commandments. All three of those things right there just eliminated Kamala Harris. I don't give a damn if she is or is not an Israelite. It doesn't matter. I don't care if they say her father's Jamaican. I don't care if they say he's Pakistani. It is, I, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. None of that applies in this situation. None of it. You can't vote for her. So what's going to happen, this is the part where I'm getting upset, where I'm getting mad. Because here's what's going to happen. Before I even do that, no, no, no. Let's keep this scriptural. The father's going to have his way tonight. Now, I want you to please go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. We have to make sure. We got to make sure. Let's keep the feelings out of this and let's keep all the all the scripture in. First Timothy chapter two and verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. You see, this is where the sisters are going to start getting mad at me, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You see what this says? I'm going to read it again. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So sisters, according to the Bible, according to the creator, according to God, the creator of the molecule, according to the power, according to him, he said, keep your mouth shut. He said, shut your mouth. That's what he said. Shut up. That's what he said. And he also said that you don't have a power over a man. You have no power over a man. You have no power over a man. None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. None. And there isn't anything wrong with that because a woman has her place. And if a woman understood that, she would know there wouldn't be anything for her to say anyway because the Most High has her in a place. And when that woman is in her place, there's, it's, it, there's movement. There are things that's happening. That woman is a power when she does what the father tells her to do but there's something called the power of eve that these women silently worship they silently love they silently love when they see men going through hardship and turmoil and things of that nature because she is dealing with that women's empowerment nonsense yep well i said it i oh, not only did I say it, I said it out loud. A lot of you sisters are not slick. Oh, yeah. That woman's rah-rah crap. Y'all, <laughs> yeah, y'all are all about that. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call it out. And so many of you sisters that's under the sound of my voice right now, y'all are going to try to convince your husbands to get out there and go vote for Kamala Harris. So here's what happens when any one of us votes for her. Number one, she may or may not be an Israelite. So that qualifies her as a stranger. Number two, she's a woman. You cannot assert authority over a man and for definitely not a nation. 
And number three, she has to remain a silent. Why? Because if this woman was to come out and talk to the nation, guess what? There are Israelites that she will be addressing. The church is not a building, it's the body. So guess what's going to happen? Just like God has done all throughout history, we will be judged as a nation. That woman has already exercised what she would do to black men when she is in power. A lot of you brothers are going to be convinced, coerced, tricked, bamboozled. You are going to have sex kept from you to vote for that woman. And there will be consequences coming behind it if you don't. That's the angering part for me. Because I know there's going to be a lot of weak, sissified men that's going to go into those polls and commit sin in the face of the father to ruin his brothers. You heard what I said. That women's empowerment thing is all about that. That's what they want to do. Do you remember what happened, what encounter with Eve when she was in the garden? What did the serpent say to her? Oh, you're going to be just like a God too. Don't worry, don't worry. The serpent already had the foreknowledge. He already knew the position of the man. Not only the man, but the tribe of Judah. The black man. You see... The power struggle started before we even knew anything about what we were going to be. Before the nation of Israel was even established, the power struggle was already in the full fledge of a fight. Why? Because it is a spiritual war and not a carnal one. When we understand that, we will succeed. So now. Family, I want to get something on top of 1 Timothy 2 and 12. I always want to bring a cross-reference, which is called a precept. Family, please, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 34, please. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 34. I'm going to read this. Watch this because we got to make sure that we bring in things along with it. The woman should keep silent in the churches. So again, that's the body. We're not talking about a building. That's the body. For they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission as the law also says. So for any one of you sisters that want to get upset with me or whatnot, I could not care less. It is the law. Shut your mouth. Be quiet. Now, that was that. Now, family, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter three. I'm going to get into this a whole lot further. Because what's going to happen? We're going to be judged as a nation. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you. We are supposed to be in power right now. If we were supposed to be doing the things that we were supposed to do, the things that God told us to do, we would be in power right now. We would be sitting in the hierarchy seats. But no. Watch. We're going to let the scriptures tell. Watch. Isaiah chapter three, verse one. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Now, let me stop for a second. You see how you mentioned that twice? You know, like how we would be like, yo, yo, that nigga, that nigga. He's doing the same thing. This is how we talk. This is our dialect. Understand our dialect. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Don't shimmy doth. Take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. The staff is the power. The whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man and the man of war. The judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. These are all the things that was taken from the 12 tribes of Israel. This is everything that has been removed and it continues. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the 
eloquent orator and I will give and I will give and I will give children I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. If you're not understanding what this is, that is the biggest insult that you could ever, ever pay a man, a man, a grown man. To say, I'm going to take a child and I'm going to make him rule over you. A child, a baby. You know what that signifies? It signifies that the man up here, he's more, he's even more stupid than a baby. People don't realize how God insults us. He insults us so hard and it is not to bring us down, it's to lift us up. He said, y'all don't have the mind of a baby. <laughs> Let's continue. And the people shall be oppressed. Now, I have to stop it here for a second because I don't want to go any further past oppression. I want to get the definition of oppression, okay? Let's go ahead and get that. The definition of oppression. Because y'all got to see and understand what this is truly is. You got to understand the insult that God is putting on us. Watch this. Oppression is what happens when people grow their own sense of power, comfort, and security at the expense of others. So as we just read here, we don't have any power, we don't have any security, and we certainly don't have any comfort. None. Those are all the things that the Father removed from us as we read the curses. So just by the standard definition according to the world when it comes to oppression why is it exactly parallel to what the bible says hmm. because the bible is real i'm gonna read it again oppression is what happens when people grow their own sense of power comfort and security at the expense of others those others are us the israelites it's the use of violence <laughs> coercion and corruption that makes life easier for some and harder for others. And it's one of the main problems addressed in the Bible from beginning to end. That is the world's definition of oppression. Even the world understands that oppression is biblical. Wow. All you have to do is read, baby. All you got to do is read. But as you see, as I've always done, I have taken the Bible and went into the world and took the world and brought it back to the Bible and shown you the parallels between the two. You can't run from this book. You can't and you won't. You never will. You never will. And that is why I am using these scriptures to show the condition that we are in right now. So it brings it directly into our reality so that you see what's going on right now. So that you see this is not a bunch of nonsense. I'm forcing you to see the reality. You're going to see the reality. Let's continue. Verse five. And the people shall be oppressed. Every one by another and every one by his neighbor, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. First and foremost, the child that is talking about the children of Israel against the ancient. We are going to disrespect our father. We are going to disrespect him right to his face. How? First and foremost. Very one, very simple by just by not wearing these. That's number one. That's then all the other sins that we commit. For many of you men that's about to turn traitor to the nation of Israel by going out there and voting for that prostitute or for Donald Trump. You can't put a stranger 
over us to rule. So if you go to those polls at all, you are a traitor to the nation of Israel. You are a traitor to your God. And as we continue reading this here, you're going to see it exactly how. But I'm going to read this again. The child shall have behave himself proudly against the ancient, which is the most high and the base, the base people, the base people, the base people. We know exactly who that is. I have taught you that many times. That's Esau and the base against the honorable. So when you read this, the father is showing you, you are aligning yourself with Esau to sin against him. Because we have to have the understanding of who the base is. And as we already know, the base people are those Edomites. And the child is you. <laughs> Verse 6. When a man shall take hold of his brother, of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. So now the father's insulting us even more. He's like, first and foremost, the house that I built, your brother is going to take charge. But he's not going to rule with the iron fist that I gave him. Let's look at these characteristics. Watch this. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer. For in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. You see that? This man has nothing. He's a traitor to our people. He's the man that will walk in and, you know what I'm saying? He looked the part, but he's not the part. This man walks in. He's revered. When he should be insulted. He has no power. Because he has not the father. He is of the world. I'm going to read seven again. In that day shall he swear saying I will not be an healer. I can't do nothing for you. I can't heal you. For in my house is neither bread nor clothing. I don't have anything. I have nothing. I have nothing. Who is this talking about? All you sisters, y'all know all those men that y'all go after that can't provide for you, but you let them impregnate you and stuff of that nature. You let these people impregnate these, these so-called men impregnate you, but you put these men on a pedestal where they don't belong. Oh, I said a lot of you sisters are going to be mad at me tonight. <laughs> Too bad. We've made those mistakes. Just like for many of us, many of us men, we've impregnated women that we should not have. They were not deserving. And when do we find out when we're no longer with them? <laughs> we've all made mistakes. All of us. Every last one of us. And what was the one major mistake that we did that we did make? What was the mistake that we made? We did not involve the father in our plan and it failed. That's the truth. Verse eight for Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen. Black man, black woman. We fell. You see how God always keeps us separated from the other 11 tribes. Because we are supposed to be the top tribe, the rulers, and we fell. And as I bring these scriptures out, people still won't be mad at me, but oh, well, you're going to stay mad too. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The father is making it known. Y'all don't listen to me. You don't do what I tell you to do. You're disrespectful. You're dishonorable. You align yourselves with my enemy. And yet you want blessings. I'm not giving you anything. Verse 9. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. 
they hide it not woe unto their soul there's an exclamation point on there you don't find that a lot in the bible woe unto their soul but who is the woe for the shoe of their countenance doth witness against them their countenance your appearance so there's going to be so many people right now that you see walking around without this just with their countenance just right just by that and the father said as we already went over a couple of weeks ago no fringes equals death do you see how many times the father brings up about that countenance everything about you your look your appearance it matters it matters it matters it matters it matters so sure their countenance doth witness against them your look your fringes will witness against you your fringes will witness against you And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. We're proud. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Y'all need to understand what the father is saying. The father is comparing you to a homosexual. You know how they are. You know how proud homosexuals are. You know this. You know how they are when they start running their mouth. Don't you call me no faggot. I'm this. You, you know how the niggas are. And the father is calling you a faggot. Woo! Woo! Y'all didn't, didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? Y'all didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, right there in your face. The father don't care. The father is a man. I'm going to read that again. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. The father said, you're going to pay yourself with evil, boy. You're going to pay yourself with evil. Verse 10, say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. That's for the righteous. The father's like, yo, for those of y'all that are doing what you're supposed to be doing, I got you. Don't worry about that. Stop worrying. Stop stressing. Yes, you're going to go through things. I got to judge this nation as a whole, but don't worry. I'm not going to take it that hard on you. You got to feel it, but I'm not going to take it as hard. So in other words, stop being a little punk. Remember, we are refined by the fire. Verse 11, woe unto the wicked. And there's an exclamation point again. It shall be ill with him for the reward of his hand shall be given him. What you do is going to be repaid to you. What you do is going to be repaid to you. So either you do good or you do bad. If you do bad, you receive bad. If you do good, you receive good. It's really that simple, guys. Do you see why now the father was like, I'm going to put a baby over you because that is so simple that even a baby can understand. What happens when you are disciplining a child? A child goes to do something, you pop them, meh. What they do? They don't do it no more. Even the baby understands that. Even the baby understands. This is why the father said, I am going to put these babes to rule over you because even a baby understands the simplicity of keep my commandments and if you don't, I'm going to whoop you. Family, like I said, make this make sense tonight, baby. This is so simple. This is so simple. And so many of you brothers are going to go out there because you don't have a spine. And that woman is going to coerce you, just like we read here tonight. She's going to convince you. She's going to encourage you. She is going to fool and to trick you into going out there and voting for Kamala Harris to support her nasty, disgusting habit of women's empowerment. Verse 12. I want y'all to see this. Please mark this one. Get your highlighters out or whatever the case is. Mark this. As for my people, again, the God of Israel, the Most High, making it exclusive. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee causes thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Do you see this? The father made it clear again. Do you see what this is? First and foremost, the father said, 
the children are our rulers, but the women rule over us as well. And you're getting ready to find out why I am so angry. You're getting ready to find out why I asked the father to come in. I said, Father, I need you to please help me, work with me, be with me in this lesson because you're getting ready to find out why. Verse 13, the Lord standeth up. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. This is the part that makes me angry because a lot of you brothers, you're going to lose your courage. You're going to lose your spine. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. And what's going to happen? You are going to sin so much. And as a whole, our whole nation is going to be judged. The nation of Israel is going to be judged because of you weak, spineless men, as you just read right here in 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. So what's about to happen? What are they setting this up for? They are setting this up for Kamala Harris to get up on that podium. It doesn't matter. It does not matter whether or not if she becomes president or not, it's your sin. It's your sin that is going to get us into even more trouble. Because you're scared of your woman. And you don't have a backbone. That's what's about to happen. The spirit of Adam. The spirit of Adam being overtaken by the spirit of Eve. And what's about to happen is that you're gonna have a lot of men with their finger in the most high's face. All because they don't have any courage. Weak, spineless men, as we just read, Verse 14, the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? So now remember, the father made sure that Esau was mentioned when he mentioned the base people, showing you that this is a camaraderie between the evil of Israel and Esau. Didn't the father say he's going to judge all of evil together, right? <laughs> Watch. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. And walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Oh, so a lot of y'all, y'all thought it was going to be about the brothers. Uh -uh. You see how the father brought man and woman into this. Verse 17. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughter of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret parts. So for all of you sisters, that is are not familiar all of you y'all think that y'all went towards weave and stuff like that on your own you thought it was a style no the father said i'm gonna remove your covering as we have already read in 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 uh corinthians 11 uh, 11 7 the father he gave you a covering that's that's how important your hair is sis that's how important your hair is that is how important your hair is sis do you understand what i'm telling you but no, you don't do that. What do you do? You put all of that nonsense into your hair. You remove your covering. You take an animal's hair and put it in yours. You tell God what you did was a mistake. And you think you're being judged in this generation. No, this is generations past. That's why I said the ancients. Because you've been here before. <sighs> Verse 
Verse 18, in that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their coals and their round tires like the moon, the chains and their bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of their legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and their crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods of their veils. The most high is breaking you sisters down all the way from your hair to your toe rings, your attitudes to your mouths, everything. He told you to shut your mouth. He said, shut up. The father said, shut your mouth. He said it. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what he said. He said, shut your mouth. I know there's so many of you sisters right now, y'all are boiling. You're boiling. And guess what? You can kill the messenger. I don't care. The father says, shut your mouth. It's your mouth that got us in trouble in the first place. That's real. That's real. And that spirit of Adam for all of you brothers, you weak, spineless men, that cannot stand up to any woman you're just as guilty according to the scriptures verse 24 and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well set hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girdle of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. I didn't say it. The father said it. So you really need to get off of your high horse, sis. You really need to get out of your ways, get out your attitude. Because for any one of you that want to go out there and try to convince that man to go vote for Kamala Harris or anyone in that presidential seat, you are a disgrace to your nation. According to the father, you stink. You have a smell that emits from you. The father didn't even say that about us. Y'all realize the father didn't say that about the brothers. He said, that he, you see how he going off on our sisters? Yeah. And you know why? Because the most beautiful thing that the father ever created, y'all turned out to be the worst. And why? That mouth. It's that mouth. And it's not even about being silent. Because you can still be quiet and have the worst, most stank attitude. And you know it's true. Guess what? For all of these queens, guess what? It's time for y'all to change. Verse 25. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. So as you see, the father brought it right back. When he cinched it up, he brought it right back to the men. You see that? Kings, princes, we are just as guilty as them. We're the ones responsible. How many of you are responsible for not teaching your wife? the proper way to be? How many of you are responsible for not teaching your children the proper way to follow the Most High? You see, it's not about pointing fingers. It's about wiping the glass or even better, opening the window and looking out and actually seeing the clarity of what's going on. Wiping away the delusion. Now, that's why I asked the father, father, please, you got to work with me here tonight, because if I did this on my own, I'd have been mean and all over the place. My attitude, my opinion would have got involved in all that stuff. I'm like, nah, uh -uh, I can't. No, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that. No, father, I need you to come in and please take charge. <laughs> please come in and take charge. Because I know there's going to be some things, some very sensitive things in here that I clown about a lot. You know, I'm like, I don't know, Father. I'm not perfect either, family. I'm not perfect either. 
But I needed him tonight. And I thank you, Father, so much. But family, there's really no more that needs to be said after that. That's pretty cut and dry. You sisters need to change your ways. And you brothers certainly need to change your ways too. We have to get better as a nation. We have to continue to build each other. We have to do that. We must help one another. We have to build one another, just like these scriptures continue to say. And everything that's said is not always going to be pleasant. And it's not. It isn't. But it can definitely be said. And the one thing that we will do Grow, love each other, and continue to glorify the Most High. Family, I love you guys so much. I will see you, Lord willing, next week.